Hey there, welcome back and thanks for watching. Got the tractor warmed up. A couple things we're gonna go through uh, with you today. Uh, get, get the Massey out here, clean up some limbs. Uh, that'd be real quick. And number two, we're gonna look at this used hydraulic oil and the Blackstone lab test results and see how it looks after 15 months and 33 hours of use. Uh, we're also going to cut that hydraulic filter open and see what it looks like on the inside and then in a future video we'll you know lay it out and compare it to the wicks and then the last thing hydraulic oil related is i'm going to show you this hydraulic fluid level situation people ask about this all the time on facebook uh so i'm going to show you uh from my perspective i sort of showed it in the last video but i didn't show everything so we'll show it different this time and then the last thing we're going to do is i'm going to show you this hood latch that i broke or it's really the the casing around the latch button. I'm gonna show you that and how I fixed it. So stick around. All right, so is this you with your Massey broken there? Let's look at that from the inside. I don't know if this come through well, but this casing stripped out. So now this is just free to, you know, move around. Uh, so the screw I already removed, uh, but what I did try to do but what I did try to do is wrap electrical tape around here just to make a friction fit and pull it in. And it's just not holding. So I'm going to, there's a tube of silicone there. I'm going to take this whole contraption off and try to silicone seal it. I've had it off before. You just got to be careful. There's a cotter pin here. Just drop it and this whole bar comes out. So let's get that taken out. Here's the dry fit, uh, you know, it's a little scuffed up, but that should work just fine. Uh, at least it's not going to fall off, so let's uh, get that marked with the pencil so I can reposition it and we will silicone that baby in there. I have it all gooped up with silicone, so let's get her in there. We'll twist it. There's my mark, I think. That's about as clean and as full of caulk as I can get that. So I'm going to let that baby dry, and we're going to try it out tomorrow. So the, the goal was to get this gray part out far enough so that when you push the button and when you slam it shut, it doesn't catch on the housing. So here you can see I can push it in far enough to get it beyond there, but see it's still out, far enough out um here that it stays aligned right and then when i go to shut it it doesn't get caught so that's how i'm gonna keep that i think that's a better design than the screw holding design that they uh installed from the factory well i was not even set up to record this because i thought it was going to be a lot easier but check this out look at this hydraulic filter I've cut it and the ring just, I, I still am not through it. I guess I cut so close to the rim, it's just built a lot heavier than those oil filters uh, as far as the outer casing. So I'm going to have to grind a little further away from the rim, I guess, to uh, crack this baby open. Yeah, wow, that was way harder than I thought. Uh, so just for clarity, this is the Agco filter. Uh, there's the part number uh, printed on the side as well. And then underneath that, I believe, is the Denso part number. Uh, i got to be careful here. I took my gloves off. That's still a little sharp there. Uh, but I cut it. And here, let me kind of reassemble it here. And it was it's just thicker here. It was a lot thicker where it was crimped. Uh, I should have cut a little lower, I guess. So anyway, uh, so I finally got it off. You can see... The hydraulic filter has no anti-drain back. It just has a seal. Um, and then it has a cartridge filter, uh, which to me looks like it's in pretty good shape. And then pressure relief spring in there. Uh, so what we'll do, I'm not going to cut the filter open uh, the rest of the way and count pleats in this video. Uh, I think I'm going to buy that Wix model and uh, compare them side by side and uh, see what they look like. 
So that will be in a future video. There's so many people that post online about this hydraulic fluid level. Let me show you this. So I have it in what I would call the dum-dum position here. So this is exactly how you should not park your loader, uh, but it's kind of the extreme. Uh, it's also exactly how you should not check your hydraulic fluid level. Uh, so I've got the cylinders extended and the three-point up. So we're going to see what the impact of each is. Uh, so let's talk about these cylinders, though. Why? Is your hydraulic fluid level lower with these cylinders extended than it is with them retracted? Well, it's simple. These pistons displace fluid. So when they're inside these those black cylinders, they displace fluid. So someone can say like, hey, you know, it's the same volume of fluid to extend your cylinder as it is to retract it. And that is not true. Um, it's more. Uh, so that's why you need to check with the loader down. So we're going to get this camera set up in front of the sight glass and we're going to show you that. And then before someone asks, this reflective strip has nothing to do with the tractor operation. It's to keep the cardinals from crapping on the tractor. <laughs> and it is quite effective, I must say. Okay, that's the sight glass and it is empty. And again, engine off, three point up, loader up bucket extended mostly i couldn't go all the way or else when you drop the loader uh it gets caught up gets caught up in the grass so i'm gonna just drop the loader arms now and see what happens Okay, loader arms down, and you can see the fluid level is already coming up. Let me try to get that bucket cur incrementally curled in now. All right, that's everything retracted, and you can see the sight glass is full, but not overfilled. Maybe a tad, not much. And this is all I've done. I just put the loader down, and you can see the bucket is curled in most of the the way I actually had that block under it and it was curled in absolutely all the way. The three point is still up. So will the three point impact this? Uh, from my prior experiment where I left the loader, only lowered the loader enough so I had a little uh, fluid in the sight glass and then I dropped the three point, fluid level changed none when I dropped the three point. So I don't think the three point has a whole lot to do with it. But those loader arms, sure do have a heck of a lot to do with the fluid level in that sight class. So do not overfill. Do not check your fluid with the loader up and then think that, you know, you're good or don't look at it with the loader up and the tractor run and you think you're bad because it's empty. So make sure to check it the way the manual says. And last up, we're going to talk about this hydraulic oil. So here are the conditions. I changed the oil after one year and 50 hours. That's exactly what the manual says. It says, or annually. Ran it for another 15 months and 33 hours. Changed it again because I had hit that or annually mark. Yes, I was nowhere near the 250 hour mark, but I hit the annual. So the question is, did I really need to do that? Did I really need to spend all that money doing that? Well, let's pull it up here on the screen and look at the lab results. So on the left, you'll see the Virgin uh, Permatran sample. So this is straight out of the bottle. I did this in a prior video. Then on the right, you're going to see the 83-hour oil, which has 33 hours and 15 months of runtime on it. So what does it show? It shows that the iron, copper, and silica, a little bit elevated. But is that really of concern according to the analyst not really so then what about the water you know we've talked about the rear transmissions in these things not being sealed systems so did it take on water does it have 
uh, moisture inside. According to the lab test results, nope. And that sort of makes sense because any moisture that would get in there, you would think would be sort of evaporate away when you use the tractor. I mean, that's my thought. So if you let it sit, probably not good. But if you're using it periodically, shouldn't be a big deal. And then the last big number to look at is this total acid number. Uh, so this is an interesting one. The virgin sample of Permatran was 3.7. The used sample I sent in was 2.7. So just to clear up on the pH scale, a lower number is more acidic, a higher number is less acidic. But when you're talking total acid number, that's not a pH scale measurement. Uh, that's a an aggregate number or some, some additive number that they uh, measure. So I asked the analyst, what's going on here? How could I start out at, at 3.7 and end up with, with oil that was less acidic? And his theory was it's highly unlikely that uh, the oil got less acidic while it was in the tractor. Uh, and keep in mind, the virgin sample that I sent off to test that wasn't the exact container of oil that I put in the tractor, you know, a year ago, right? So that oil from a year ago, the theory is that it must have just been slightly less acidic than the oil um, I had tested as a virgin sample. So that just kind of shows you 3.7 versus 2.7. Um, I guess really just some of the variation in the whole single sample test methodology. So word of caution, don't look at one oil analysis and say this is the end-all be-all uh, because that's just not how uh, tests are done. You have to do averages over many, many samples uh, to really get your numbers. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied with those results. It doesn't show any uh, issues with the tractor. Uh, and I'm also thinking I could probably push the envelope just a little bit. Uh, I'm still going to not wait uh, and do it on hours, 250 or whatever, uh, but maybe 18 months uh, or so. So maybe next year, 2024, maybe I'll change the oil in the fall. So maybe at that point, you know, three more months, get it tested and see what that looks like. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you watching. You got any questions, post them in the comments. You have any comments and experiences of your own, post those in the comments too. I replied as many as I can. I look forward to reading the comments. I appreciate you all watching. Take care and I'll catch you next time.